It's a big world out there with plenty of things to do and places to explore. But it's a world with a lot of big problems to solve, like pollution and global warming. It's time we all work together to solve them. So, where do we start? The first step is learning all that we can about the problems facing the Earth. And then figuring out ways to solve them. We call that exploring. And right now we're going to explore... Ethanol. Ethanol. What exactly is ethanol? Well, ethanol is our motor fuel, like gasoline, which is used to power cars and trucks anything with an internal combustion engine. But unlike gasoline, which is a petroleum product made from oil, ethanol is made from plants. For more than a century now, gasoline and diesel oil were the fuels of choice for cars and trucks. There was plenty of it under the ground and it was easy to get. Problem is, both gasoline and diesel are fossil fuels, a non-renewable resource, which means they cannot be replaced easily and they release pollutants into the atmosphere when they are burned. As the world grew and more and more cars and trucks were built, the demand for motor fuel grew as well. While a reliable supply of oil to make that fuel became more and more difficult and expensive to find, and the atmosphere became polluted. Since we use fossil fuels in almost everything we do, from going to school to shopping in the market, you'll notice the cost of just about everything keeps going up as well. Enter ethanol, a more eco-friendly, affordable, and renewable source of fuel for cars and trucks. Ethanol is nothing new. Archaeologists believe it has been used by humans since before recorded time, but not as a motor fuel. They believe it was used as an intoxicating ingredient in alcoholic beverages. Dried ethanol residues have been found on 9,000-year-old pottery in northern China, indicating that even the Neolithic peoples drank ethanol. But, ethanol has been used as a motor fuel since about 1908, when Henry Ford built his famous Model T to run on either gasoline or pure alcohol. At the time, he called ethanol the fuel of the future. Ford may one day be right, but in the meantime, petroleum-based gasoline became the fuel of choice through most of the 20th century. Today, ethanol is making a comeback because of concerns about the environment and the supply of oil used to make gasoline. It's already the fuel of choice for race cars, like these Indy cars, which use 100% ethanol fuel to run at speeds well over 200 miles an hour. The movement to ethanol has been positive in so many ways, not only performance, it's a lighter footprint on the environment that we, you know, we're, we're a traveling entertainment series. We, we take all our race cars and we burn a lot of fuel in all the places we go and we're emitting less carbon, you know, we're racing around the world. Whatever we can do to alleviate that is, uh, is what IndyCar has been a pioneer in. Ryan Hunter Ray knows his race car well and says it's a combination of high octane fuel, well-tuned equipment, and skill that wins races. Uh, there's a lot of secrets to winning an IndyCar, but it, it, that's, that's one of them. I mean, you have to be forward thinking, you gotta, have to think 10 steps ahead of yourself. Well, Indy cars, unlike the, for let's say a NASCAR car, is that they are very aerodynamically efficient. And they use they use aerodynamics and they rely on that. So when you get behind and around other cars, it, it upsets the handling of the race car. That's the most difficult thing about racing Indy cars that people don't understand. That when you do get in the in the vicinity of another car, it's uh, the car is very upset by that and uh, it becomes very hard to drive. And when the aerodynamics give up on the car, you're in the wall. So, how are plants turned into a liquid that can fuel a 200 mile an hour race car? It begins in a farmer's field. Ethanol can be made from almost any crop you can grow. Sorghum, wheat, barley, sugarcane, even potatoes, just as long as the plant contains sugar. In the United States, most ethanol is made from corn. Yeah, well it starts, it's trucked in as corn. It's then ground down and cooked. From there, fermentation begins to start the process. And then from there, it'll go to distillation where it's raised up to 190 proof. And, and, and from there, they obviously have to take out the water, dehydration. 
and it's ready to go into our Indy cars. Well, Ryan, it's a little more complicated than that. The corn that farmers grow to make ethanol is a little different than the type of corn we eat. But once it's harvested, the farmer loads his corn into a truck and sends it to a production plant where it takes several days to turn a bushel of corn into more than two gallons of ethanol. The process begins when the corn is milled. That is, it's sent to a machine that grinds it up into small particles for use in several different products, including ethanol. Some production plants turn part of the corn into animal feed, and other parts into ingredients for cake mixes, snack foods, even tortillas. And some of the byproducts of making ethanol are purified, compressed, and sold to make carbonated soda and dry ice. But to make ethanol, corn has to ferment. The milling process exposes the cornstarch inside the kernel of corn and turns it into a powder which is used in the fermentation process. The powder is then mixed with water and an enzyme that produces a liquid called mash. The mash is then cooked at 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit to liquefy the starch, then heated to 225 degrees to help break the starch down. Once the mash is removed from the cookers and cooled, a second enzyme is added to convert the liquid starch into sugar that can be fermented. This type of sugar is called dextrose. The dextrose is then mixed with yeast. After about 48 hours, the combination of yeast and dextrose turns into crude ethanol and carbon dioxide. But this newly fermented mash contains only about 10% ethanol. The rest is a mixture of water and other impurities. To get 100% pure ethanol, the liquid has to go through two more steps. First, the mixture is heated to a temperature at which the ethanol vaporizes, but the remaining impurities do not. Then, the ethanol vapor is collected and cooled, and it turns back into a liquid. Finally, to remove any remaining water in the mixture, the liquid is passed through a dehydration system. What comes out the other end is about 200 proof pure ethanol. To make sure humans do not drink what amounts to 200 proof moonshine, a small amount of gasoline is then added to the mix, making it undrinkable. From the plant, the ethanol is then sent to holding tanks, where it is stored until it is shipped to customers by train or in tanker trucks. The 100% ethanol is taken from the ethanol plant here in a tanker to the blending station, where it's then mixed with gasoline at a certain percentage and then trucked to your local gas station. Race cars run on 100% ethanol, and drivers say there are several advantages ethanol has over the petroleum-based fossil fuels of the past. Well, from a pure racing perspective, we've gained performance in the switch to ethanol. It's been a plus on every aspect for us. We've gained fuel mileage, therefore we can shrink the fuel cell in the car, run on less fuel, and therefore have a lighter race car which goes faster. The Indy cars are pretty much an example to the country as a whole, to what ethanol is capable of. If this car can go by at 235 miles an hour running on ethanol, it opens up people's eyes to see what, what, what it can do for themselves and their, own, and their own lives and driving their own cars. Well, the ethanol we use in the Indy car is actually 100% ethanol. It's, it's straight ethanol, and our cars can run on that. Now, the cars on the road, your cars will actually run on a mix of gasoline and ethanol. The ethanol you buy at a gas station is actually a blend of ethanol and unleaded gasoline. E10 ethanol is comprised of only 10% ethanol and 90% unleaded gas. It's the most common blend used in vehicles. E85 ethanol is a blend of 85% ethanol and 15% unleaded gasoline and can only be used in newer flex fuel cars and trucks. There are several advantages of using ethanol over gasoline. First of all, 
Ethanol blends can decrease a car's toxic tailpipe emissions by as much as 30% and other pollutants by 12%. Because ethanol burns cleaner than gasoline, it creates fewer greenhouse gases and is better for the environment. By blending ethanol with unleaded gasoline, the supply of fuels for cars and trucks is extended, creating less of a demand for costly imported oil. And because ethanol is made from a renewable resource, unlike oil, there is little chance that the supply of corn to make ethanol will run out. The disadvantages? Although ethanol can be easier to find and produce than gasoline and often sells for less at the pump, some people say ethanol blends are not as powerful as pure gasoline. Cars and trucks won't go as far on a gallon of ethanol as they will on a gallon of unleaded gas. Did you know a car's fuel tank isn't the only place where ethanol is used? Look on the labels of the products laying around your house. If you see ethyl alcohol listed there, that product contains ethanol. You'll find it in hairspray, mouthwash, aftershave lotion, cologne, and perfume. Also in deodorants, lotions, hand sanitizers, soaps, and shampoos. Did you know a bottle of household disinfectant spray can contain nearly 80% ethanol? So the next time you pass a large field growing a crop of corn, or watch the Indianapolis 500 on TV, think about the many ways you can use our natural resources more wisely and help make the earth a better place in which to live. You know, there's still a lot more to learn about the world and what makes it go round. And it's never too late to explore. You might be surprised about all you can learn, too. Until next time, I'm Katrina. And I'm Christian. See ya. Out there exploring.